Hello and welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about my Ceph storage cluster I have running at the data center and how badly it sucks. So uh, if you don't know anything about Ceph, it is a network storage cluster. Uh, I'm using it inside of Proxmox to have highly available storage across all of my virtual machines. Ceph should be very fast, but for me it sucks. So let's do a speed test on our storage and try this out. So you'll see that we have one gigabyte copied and we have 349 megabytes per second, which is absurd because that's not the speeds that I normally get. So I'm not quite sure why I'm getting these speeds right now when I normally don't. All right, so it's been a little bit since that first clip and honestly, this video is going to go in a completely different direction. I was going to use something called LinStore for my uh, storage cluster, but then I was doing some more research and I realized there's a lot of things that I can do to optimize my Ceph cluster. So the first thing that I did is I turned on jumbo frames on my Microtik switch. So basically, as soon as I turned on jumbo frames, that made a massive difference. So if we take a look here, We've got um, basically what a screenshot is from my Microtik switch. We have jumbo frames here. Um, and you'll see that a lot of the MTUs are now on the 9000 MTUs, which is jumbo frames. 1500 is a normal packet size um, of a standard network. So this is looking pretty good so far and the speeds of the cluster did uh, improve a lot. You'll see right here, uh, basically as soon as I turned on jumbo frames, we went from probably 89.2 megabits per second all the way up to 600 and some um, odd megabytes per second. Um, and it's a considerable increase just because of turning on jumbo frames. Um, this was um, something that I've never really tried on my Ceph cluster before, um, but it is nice to see that I am able to actually use jumbo frames and it does make a big difference in the cluster. So um, I thought that was probably all that I had to do, um, but I kept going. And you'll see if I open up this picture right here, you'll see that our IOPS are extremely, extremely slow. So we've got about four IOPS here, um, and that's kind of embarrassingly slow. So um, I want something faster than four IOPS. Like the speed test itself was taking nine hours to finish, which is just absurd. That's kind of the background on the uh, jumbo frames deal. As soon as I got jumbo frames, like I said, it did really improve. Um, considerably. Like I said, there's also more work that I want to do. So recently I posted a video about my data center and all that I have inside of there, like the servers and stuff. So um, a lot of people were asking why my Ceph cluster sucks so badly. A lot of comments said that like, you know, they've got three SSDs running at 10 gigs per second um, and 500 megabytes per second with no tuning. And there's something seriously wrong with a Ceph cluster at 20 megabytes per second. I totally agree with that. So there's also some networking talk in the comments. A lot of people do the ring network where essentially all the servers are interconnected. They're not connected up to a switch. Um, and I could go that route, but I don't think it's something network based because um, if we take a look at that network um, graph here from the Microtik switch, I mean, obviously we're not even close to maxing out a 10 gig connection. We're only about 12.4 megabits per second which is not even close to what the maximum of a 10 gig connection is. So one other thing I noticed as I was digging into this issue is that some disks more than others have a stupid high commit or apply latency. And this is kind of a, um, just a metric of how long it takes data to be written to the disk from Ceph. So you'll see some disks here have really small latencies like some of the OSDs up here at the top. Some of them down here also have really low milliseconds in their apply and commit latency, but this one specifically has 1200, which is crazy. So this is something that as I noticed, as I watched my Ceph cluster, I'll put screenshots on the screen, some disks over others did have this. And I noticed that as I was looking through these, some disks never had the apply and commit latency. So this was showing that those disks specifically seem to be good disks. The other ones were not. Um, with that being said, I did some more digging and I realized that a lot of my disks on my cluster are all stupid, um, crucial disks. And I'll show you more on that in a few minutes. Um, but there's specifically a mix match model of disk that I have all over the cluster. So they look very similar, but they are actually wildly different. So if we pull this up here, we have um, one of my Proxmox servers. I'm gonna have to blur all this stuff out at the top, I apologize, but um, you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. So we've got the CT1000BX500 SSD um, here, um, but then if we scroll down, actually this server does not have one. Um, if we make this bigger though, this server should have some. Yes, right here we have an MX500 SSD. So a B versus MX500 SSD, um, may not seem like a big difference as black versus silver. I mean, obviously color's a thing, but um, outside of that, there's actually more of a difference than it seems like. So the BX500 is about half the cost of a MX500 disc, um, and that specifically has um, something called a DRAM cache. And that's really important in SSDs. Um, a lot of SSDs without them are actually considerably slower than they should be because they don't have a cache built in. So the DRAM cache essentially boosts the disc and gives it a lot of extra speed because you're not 
consistently filling up the disc, but you might be doing a couple gigs at a time. So it caches that kind of in the disc before it writes it to the actual SSDs. So with that being said, um, unfortunately, pretty much a majority of the discs that I have in that cluster are all DRAM cache list drives, which are the crucial BX500 SSDs. As soon as I noticed this, I had absolutely no way to find out unless until I bought some. So I started buying some new um, MX500 SSDs. I'm not even done with this project yet, but I have all of these crucial BX500 SSDs. I have literally seven SSDs here that are all one terabyte each that all do not have a DRAM cache just because they were half the price. So it's kind of annoying, but obviously it's totally my fault. So I took a trip to the data center uh, the other day and I installed some new disks that I ordered from Amazon. These were ones that do have a DRAM cache. These are the MX500 disks. Um, and the speeds have greatly increased, which is really cool. So pretty much right after that, I was able to get probably 3000 IOPS, which going from nine to 3000 is fantastic. Now I really should be somewhere in the 700,000 range of IOPS according to ChatGPT. Um, but obviously that, that might just be a theoretical number. Um, but anyways, 3000 is a lot better. You'll see here that even on the recovery speed, I'm recovering at 169 mega, maybe bit, maybe bits per second. Um, and it's recovering a lot faster. Typically it was recovering at some kilobits per second. Now it's at least in megabits. So the recovery is a lot quicker. So yeah, that's where we are now. A couple discs do have the new DRAM cache that really did improve my speeds. I've got about five to six SSDs left in this project um, and I'm going to kind of wait to end this video until I get there. So we will get there later on in this video. But as of right now, this progress update, we do have considerably better speeds um, and I don't really care about the capacity as much. I only have about two terabytes of stuff there um, on that Ceph cluster specifically. So I really don't care how big the capacity is. I'm just trying to buy some SSDs that way I can start loading them in. And I personally think that the one terabyte SSDs make the most sense to add like these, not these, but one terabyte SSDs in general, I think make the most sense because um, they're a pretty moderately good size. Like you can pretty much add a couple at a time and you can really increase your capacity by a lot. I just got two more SSDs in and these are going to replace two more of the SanDisk SSDs that I have in the cluster. Two more SSDs are on the way, which means we'll have a total of eight crucial MX100 SSDs. Um, and I have noticed considerable increases in performance. Um, even just like the websites that are hosting on this cluster, they are loading a lot faster and everything is looking really good um, in terms of um, just the set cluster in general. Like it's it's back to where I expect it to be. So it's really cool to see. So eventually once I get all the SanDisk SSDs replaced, I'm gonna do a speed test and we'll show that in the next clip. These are the only clips that I got at the data center, but as you can see, I am installing some new uh, Dell SSDs, I guess refurbished ones, and I'm taking out the SanDisk in the other crucial SSDs and removing those from the Ceph cluster. It is pretty late at night, but I'm doing the final part of this video. I have just installed a couple more SSDs as you just saw at the data center and um, I have the results of the test. So I just did a speed test on a virtual machine that is on um, the Ceph cluster, and it is the results are very disappointing. Uh, still, I was getting about 3,100 IOPS. I saw it peak around um, 4,000 IOPS. Um, that's the right speed. The read speed is about 10,000 IOPS. Um, that's kind of expected. Um, the right, sorry, the read um, megabits per second only 36.7 the rate is 12.4 so those numbers should be extremely higher than they are now i'm still kind of confused i guess i could say um on why the results are so terribly low um obviously um 3000 is a lot better than seven or eight um but at the same time it's probably not where it really could be i have a 10 gigabit network i have four hosts instead of the required three um and i have a lot of ssds per host so this leads me to a couple conclusions that I could make. Um, first of all, that the um, crucial MX500 SSDs are just as bad as the BX500 SSDs. And you can actually see that here on the screenshot that um, essentially the latency is still high on these crucial SSDs because these new data center SSDs I got are actually faster. So they are actually, um, the crucial SSDs are actually slowing the, lowering the speed down. Um, so part of that is yes, because I did get the data center SSDs, um, but I believe those are faster. They are actually weighted less on the Ceph cluster, so they have a lower weight. So this is kind of the point of the video where I'm asking for feedback still. So I ordered three more data center SSDs. I'm going to install those in two of them and get rid of one of the crucial MX500 SSDs. So hopefully that'll give us, that'll put us up to six of these data center SSDs and one, two, three, four, five, 
five of the crucial SSDs. And I think that'll put us at a pretty good point because um, that will give us some data center SSDs, but it'll also give us the cheaper crucial SSDs. Real quick before I end this video off, I do wanna tell you my configuration, if I can find it. Yes, I can. So I have um, a Seth pool size of two, PG auto scale mode is on, minimum size is two, uh, crush rule is replicated rule, number of PGs is 128. And like I said, um, as of right now, I just deleted a Seth disk that I don't need anymore because it's a SanDisk SSD. Um, right now, I'm standing at one, two, three data center SSDs, one, two, three, four, five, six crucial MX500 SSDs. One host has three SSDs. The other hosts all have two SSDs on them. Um, and about 24 to 34 SS, or sorry, PGs per um, OSD. So whatever that equates to. Uh, the weight of the, um, the data center SSDs are 0 0.87329. The weight of the crucial ones are 0 0.9097. So um, just in case you can help me, there's all my specs of my Ceph cluster. Um, like I said, though, it is a lot better. Um, and I am somewhat pleased with the increased performance. I can actually do things on the cluster now, unlike before, which is an A start. Um, but I think I can still fine tune it more. So if you can help me with that in the comments, please let me know. That is about all I have for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. I will, I probably will do a part two if I have an update, if I can get this Ceph cluster tuned in more. Um, but as of now, this is the latest information about my Ceph cluster. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next video.